uh, who had the imposition of ashes. Anglicans over the last number of years. And it took me a long time to work up a good congregation on Ash Wednesday at the last church uh, and to developing some spiritual disciplines around that. But it's a very important day because we are uh, setting out on a journey that is patterned after our Lord's uh, temptation in the desert, as we heard in the Gospel this morning, uh, 40 days and 40 nights. Although the 40 days of Lent do not include uh, Sundays because they're considered mini Easter's. So if you have given anything up for Lent, Easter's a free day. <laughs> That's what my kids used to say to me. <coughs> anyway, <clears throat> but definitely it, it's a time where we can get focused. And I love, I love the Anglican traditions and Roman Catholic as well, that we have these cyclical events, liturgical events every year that come around that we get to do things over again, especially Lent. And I think it was Herbert O'Driscoll who said that uh, he loved Lent because it gave us an opportunity over and over again until we get it right. <laughs> you know, disciplines in the church and uh, the call to, uh, to be a better person. Uh, at, at the Ash Wednesday service, uh, we do have an instruction as to an introduction to uh, uh, Ash Wednesday and the service itself and Lent by an invitation to self-examination, uh, penitence, prayer, uh, fasting, almsgiving, reading and meditating on the Word of God. Those are the things that we can do to uh, help us become sort of better spiritual people. And I know, you know, uh, we look after our bodies fairly well, we treat them really well, but our spirits, uh, I think we, we don't uh, uh, sort of uh, attend to them as often or uh, give them quality time uh, that we need. And I think going to church every Sunday is great, but I don't think that's enough. So Lent offers us an opportunity to do daily sort of self-examination, daily disciplines. And uh, not just with probably, you know, sort of giving up things as we tend to do, giving up chocolate or <laughs> giving up certain other things, habits maybe, but also maybe taking something on, uh, something that's beneficial to the community, uh, that would benefit somebody else, whether it's visiting somebody, uh, whether it's happening at the food bank, or whatever. I think whatever basically helps the community, I think will eventually help you as well by taking it on as a discipline. Uh, again, the, the uh, scriptures remind us today that, you know, we, we live in a kind of uh, wilderness, and even though it may not be air, dry, and scorching sun, which we'd like to have at this point, wouldn't we? <laughs> this long winter. But we live in a different kind of wilderness, where there are many distractions. We're very busy people, and we tend to be drawn into certain things that keep us on the go all the time. I think this might be a good time that during this uh, time of Lent to maybe slow down and to take notice of different things. Maybe spend more time with family. Tend to yourself as well. It is about self, actually, uh, because uh, Lent is not about changing other people in, in, around you. It's about changing self. It's about improving self. And uh, my daughter Amy actually sent me this the other night. It was last night or the night before. It's by Jalal Ad-Din Rumi, and he, this is a quote, Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. You know, and I think all too often we want to change other people rather than maybe we need to be the ones to be changed. And again, Lent offers us this opportunity to search out those things that might be hindering our relationship with somebody else, our relationship with God. And uh, so it, it becomes a pilgrimage. And knowing well that um, I believe that we, in this journey, there is an end to it. There is an end. We, if we are able to identify those things that are causing us problems and hurting us our, in our lifestyles, uh, we can let, lay them before the, the cross on Good Friday. And then we know the empty tomb, there's resurrection, there will be new life. So in this journey together, uh, we do it as a community, 
but we need to sort of, again, look at ourselves, uh, look at how we are, uh, how we treat other people, how we speak to other people, um, uh, how we engage with the community. So, uh, before I close, again, just a reminder, the invitation that was given at uh, Ash Wednesday, and hopefully next year we'll see more of you, <laughs> but... Uh, and uh, we begin the journey of Easter to Easter with the sign of ashes. Uh, it's an ancient sign speaking of our frailty and the uncertainty of human life. And we pronounce, when we do the cross on people's forehead, we say, you are but dust, and to dust you shall return. It's a very harsh statement, but the reality of it is all around us. And yet, yet, we are but dust and to dust we shall return, but we have hope in this Jesus Christ who went through the same thing we went, we are going through now. And we know by his life and his death and his resurrection, we too will find that at the end of our journey, we will find resurrection. So I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, um, by penitence, prayer, fasting, don't fast, though, if you've got a health issue and you can't fast. Do something else. But also almsgiving. And by reading and meditating on the Word of God. Read your Bible. Uh, read the prayer book. Some wonderful stuff in there. Read the uh, Baptismal Covenant. The Liturgy of the Baptismal Covenant. Great promises in there about <clears throat> uh, fighting against evil and, and supporting one another in teaching and prayer. So, uh, in closing then, those are the kinds of things we can do to give us a very productive and, and helpful Lent and uh, hopefully become better people that we may also uh, uh, raise up a better community. I'm going to close with a prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, we confess that we have come to church this morning maybe for not all the right reasons. Sometimes we want what we want, the way we want it, and most of the time we want it now. And some of us have had a tough time this week with sickness, death. We are here looking for comfort, for peace. Some of us uh, had tough decisions to make this week. We're looking for some help with important, perplexing choices. Some of us have terrible problems, problems we fear that we cannot handle on our own. We are looking for help and solutions. We do not know at this point whether or not what we want is what you want for us. We do not know if our heartfelt desires are really worth meeting. Only you know. Lord, meet us where we are. Take what we have brought here, and during this time of worship, transform us and our desire into what you will for us. Help us to overcome the temptation to worship ourselves and our own need. Give us the grace and the courage to worship you, to listen to your commandment, to love and to be loved, to trust you and to adore you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen.